Hey there students. So in today's video, we'll be going over stockholders equity. Not only that, but specifically more stockholders equity journal entries. So how to journalize different types of transactions within equity. So first I'm going to go over kind of like what equity is, the different components of equity. Then we'll talk about how to journalize certain transactions. Then we'll go through a big practice problem at the end. So equity, uh, as you might know, I went over this in my other video, how to calculate equity, but just to recap, equity is basically the difference between assets and liabilities. So that's equity. It's what's left over. And a lot of stuff with equity usually involves stuff like common stock. I'm sure you've heard this. Or just stock in general. There's another type of stock called preferred stock. So the difference between those is the common stock is the more common piece of stock that a company will issue. It's cheaper. Uh, the people that purchase it, there's less voting rights. They get less of a say within that company. Preferred stock, on the other hand, is usually more expensive, but it's like a VIP stock. So people that buy preferred stock get higher voting rights, other special privileges. Now, there's other stuff called like treasury stock. Treasury stock is basically when a company buys back its own stock. That's treasury stock. Company issues it to a customer. Customer has it. There's a lot of stock out in, in the world. The company goes and buys back their own stock. There's various reasons why we'll do that. We don't need to get into that today. But that's what treasury stock is. I'll show you how to calculate that and uh, journalize it in a sec. Let me scroll down here. Up, I'll go up, there we go. So a little bit more let's talk about here, a few other terms. So stuff like outstanding stock. All that is, is it equals issued minus treasury. What does that mean? That just means what's left over out there. So if you issue a thousand shares of stock, but you buy back 500, your outstanding stock is 500. Different example, you, you go and issue a thousand and you, sorry, you buy back 200. So what's left over out there in the hands of the people is 800. That's outstanding. Let's see what else. Um, par value. So par value, or sometimes they call it stated value. Just think of, think of that, think of it as the stock's uh, inherent value. When a company is founded, they set the stage for the stock and they're like, yeah, our shares of stock, $4 each. I mean, think about when Google was founded out of that garage, right? They, they didn't value their stock too high because they were a new company. But what changes over time is something called the market value. I'll put that right here. The market value is what the market says the stock is worth. There's always gonna be a difference. So the difference, market value minus par value, that's going to equal something called APIC, or additional paid in capital. There's a thousand names for APIC. There's like additional paid in capital in excess, or, or paid in capital in excess, or additional paid in capital. Uh, there's a few others as well. But it's just the difference between what the market says and what and what the inherent value is. That's the difference. Now, these are a lot of different terms within equity. I just kind of ran through a few of them. This is going to be mainly about journal entries, though. Let me show you how I journalize a few of these. I'm just going to go through some brief examples, then we'll go through a problem. So let me find my journal entry board. 
Okay. All right, so journal entries. Let's go through a few examples. So let's just say you issue some shares of stock, common stock. So what you would do is you would debit the cash that you got for it, because when you issue stock, you get cash in return as a company, which is great. Now you're gonna credit, you'll credit the common stock Oops, sorry about that there. You'll credit the common stock. Now this is gonna be for that par value we talked about. And if there's any excess, right, this is gonna be your market value, what people pay for it up here. You're gonna credit the excess, which is what they call APIC. It's market minus par. So that's how you would record that. Um, let's see, with treasury stock, we won't go too deep into this, this is more basics, but if you buy back your stock, you would debit treasury stock, or they call it T stock. You debit it, right, because it, it offsets your equity, it reduces equity. Equity is a credit. So we debit treasury stock, it's reducing equity. And you're gonna credit what you bought it with, which is cash. Okay, let's do a few more. We'll do one on dividend, a dividend example. So dividends to record that, will dividends also reduce equity? So naturally, it's going to be a debit. That's a debit there. And you're going to, you declare a dividend, right? A dividend, I'm not sure if I went over this, but it's like a bonus to all of your shareholders. You're like, hey, every quarter we'll give you a little extra because you believe in our company. You invest it and you'd be a dividend. So when a company declares a dividend, and I can go over this. So this is declared, meaning... They announced it. They announced the dividend. We are going to do this thing in the future. They declare it. You're going to debit your dividends and you're going to credit what they call dividends payable, saying that I'll pay this out later. Usually it's in stock or usually it's in cash. <clears throat> this is a cash example. Let's say you now you paid it. What you're going to do is you'll debit dividends payable to get rid of it you credit the cash that you owe your investors. All right, let's do some, do a practice problem here. So I try to integrate a few things here so we can go over this problem. It says Atlantis Corp, and I'll make this a white pen to offset it reported during 2019 common stock issuance of 300 shares of a dollar stock and it's 15 a share that's important additionally they declared a dividend 10 bucks per share outstanding and there are 2000 shares outstanding lastly they bought back 50 shares oops uh, for 12 bucks each all right so i think there's three transactions here we got to do so number one is going to be the common stock. So we know that we got cash. We always get cash for common stock for the most part. I'll say CS for common stock. Oh, sorry, not CS. This is cash. Debit cash. How much was it for? Well, it's going to be for your market value. So the $15 per share times the 300. That's your market value. So let's go ahead and do that. So 300 times 15. 300 shares, so it's 4,500 bucks you get in cash. Now you're going to credit common stock, because that's what common stock is a dollar per share times 300. That's easy. $300. And what's left over is 
your APIC. It's the difference between your debit and your credit. 4,500 minus 300, that's easy math, 4,200. Okay, that's the first journal entry. Second, they declared a dividend. So let's go ahead and write that in here down here, see if I can fit it in. You declare a dividend, you announce it, so you have to debit your dividends, and you're going to credit, since you're only declaring it, you haven't been, you're going to pay it in 2020. You're going to go ahead and um, credit dividends payable. I'll just write div payable. How much is that for? Well, you have to take $10 per share of outstanding shares, so 10 bucks, and they have 2,000 shares outstanding. 10 times 2,000 is 20,000, and that's in dollars, 20K. I'm gonna try to fit this in over here. Sorry, I'm crowding it, but the third journal entry is right here. It's um, They bought back 50 shares of their own stock for 12 bucks. So what you're gonna do is you just debit T stock, and I'll write it down here. You just do 12 bucks times 50. $600. We're going to credit. Since you bought it back, it's just cash. 600. That's it. So there's a few journal entries there for equity. We went through different components of equity, the important stuff. We went through uh, the trans are examples of journal entries and then finally a big practice problem where we practiced uh, stockholders equity journal entries so hopefully that video was helpful um, recently I just released the ultimate depreciation course so if you're interested in that doing a 50% off special uh, for a limited time it had goes through all the different types of depreciation I'm sure if you're in school you have a chapter on depreciation it's one of the harder ones I created an awesome course on that. So if you want to learn more, click the link below. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.